So we're going to continue on with our tutorials here. Uh, last time we left off, we did some blocks work and some delegate and protocol work. Uh, this time we're going to be jumping into uh, the NSXML parser. Uh, and we're going to parse out an XML file and then we're, we're going to return the data via delegate. So as you can see in our uh, NS object class data here, uh, I just added a few things. Uh, string for uh, ID, title, and description, synthesized it, and that kind of matches what our XML file looks like. And this is an XML I just pulled together really quickly. Uh, you can see we have ID, title, and description. We're going to parse this out and then return this data inside this class. So let's get started. I'm actually going to make a new class. And it is an NS object, and we'll call it XML parser. Okay. And we're going to have to set up a few things here. So, what do we want to return from the parser? Well, we need an array of items that we want to return. So, we're going to call this. XML parser delegate and we'll add the optional tag here just because maybe there's different times when we want to use the XML parser uh, maybe you have multiple XML files and you want to return different arrays and we don't need all of these uh, return delegates all the time so we make them optional So we're going to return the data items, which is an NS mutable array. Then we're going to come down here to the interface, and we're actually going to have to add the delegate uh, for the NS XML parser. Okay. And we're also going to need a couple things inside this. Uh, we're going to need NS string, which is the current element. So the cur current element is going to be uh, whatever this hits on. So if the parser comes through and hits content, item, ID, title, description, that's going to be the current element that we're currently going through. And we're also going to need to import our class data object. And make a new one and just call it class data item. Okay, then we're also going to need a couple properties here. I will make them non atomic. We're going to need the NSXML parser delegate. Actually, we're going to need the XML parser delegate, my bad. And we're also going to need an array. Call that data items. So that'll be the local array that we'll fill. And once this is filled, we'll return it via the delegate. And here, we're going to provide the file name that we want to parse and get data items from. So if you have multiple versions of XMLs or things like that, uh, just create like a basic function name here. Okay, and we'll bring that into the main file. Okay, and we'll also have to uh, synthesize our data items. 
We don't get any warnings. And then we're going to take data items equal to a new array. Okay, so now we can start setting everything up. So I'm going to set up a new function and just call it parse uh, XML. And then we're going to pass the file name again. Okay. And all we're going to do here is create the NSXML parser. Then we're going to set the delegate to itself, and then we're going to parse it out. But we're also going to need a couple functions. Uh, we're going to need the did start element, which is this one right here. Some of these uh, can be fairly long. I'm trying to keep my window as small as I can so you can see all the uh, text easily. And we're also going to need the did end. Okay. And we're also going to need the found characters. And I think that's everything. That's really all we need. So we have the start of the element, then we have the end of the element, and then we found the characters within that element. So I'm going to show you how we go through all of these. So the first thing we're going to do is actually set up our parser. So we're going to have an NSXML parser. Uh, we'll just call it parser. We're going to init with data. And that data is going to be NS data. Data with contents of file. And in this case, uh, we're doing a local file. So we're going to have to use NS bundle. So I'm going to use NS bundle main bundle. Oh, we got lots of brackets here. Uh, then we're going to do resource path. Then we're going to do string by appending path component. There it is. And we'll say the file name. And we kill off all those. There we go. And then we set the parser delegate. And then we get a result when we try to parse. You can see right there. And then if result, and we could throw some uh, NS logs here. Uh, we'll say this is parsing error. And what we can do is we can add parser parse error onto that just like that. Okay, so let's start with the did start element. So that current element name, we're going to set that to the element element name that we've started. And then we want to check to make sure that element name is something. 
something that starts off one of our items. So in our testing XML, we can see that we have IDs. We can't do item because they're pretty generic. So I'm going to start off my did start item with ID. So I'm going to check to see if my XML parser has hit the ID. And that's going to trigger me to create a new data item. So I'm going to say if element name is equal to string, I'll say ID. Then what we're going to do is take that data item that we created. And make that to a new data item. Now what I like to do here is I'll take this and I'll make a switch statement in here for this. So if I have multiple files uh, and I have different starting elements, uh, I'll actually make the switch statement here and create a new item when I start parsing it out. Okay, we're going to come down to end element. Actually, we'll skip end element for right now. And what we'll do is we'll go down to the found characters. Because this is really the meat and potatoes of what's going on. So we have the start, we found the characters, and then we end. So when we find the characters, what we're going to do is we're going to check if the characters, actually we're going to check to see if the current element name is equal to string ID. Then we have uh, the data item that we created, and we'll set the ID. And that's equal to the string of characters. Now you see how that works. And I'll just copy this, and this will be title because that's the next one. And then description is the last one. So let's set title, string, Set description string. Okay. So as this goes through, it'll say, oh, we started an element. We set the element name. Uh, if the element is equal to ID, then we're creating a new object. And then as it goes through more, it'll find these. And if the current element name is set to any of these, then we set the data items data. Now what we're going to do in the did end element, We're going to set the current element name equal to nothing, because <clears throat> at that point, we're hitting the end of these, the end tags in an XML file. And my items start with just an item tag. So I'm going to say if element name is equal to string item. <clears throat> so if we're ending on an item, what we want to do is we want to add our date item to our data, data items. <laughs> Basically just adding the data item to the array that we created. And we also want to check for something else here. We also want to find out a point where we finish the XML file. So as you can see in our XML, I have an ending tag of content. So I'm going to go back to the parser. And then I'm going to say if 
element name is equal to string content, then basically what's happening is we are ending the parsing of the XML file. So I'm going to say self delegate return data items data items. Okay, so did end element actually offers two functions, ending the element or the object inside it, inside the XML, and then ending the XML itself and returning the data items via the delegate. And I believe that's everything we need, so we'll jump over to our view controller here. We'll import the XML parser. We'll set the XML parser delegate. We'll create a new XML parser object. I'm going to take these two functions out right here. We can just see the output. And we'll say XML is equal to a new XML parser. XML set delegate. And we have XML get data items from testing.xml. And then we have a returned data items here. Actually, we'll do a for each here. Okay, so we set up our parser and then we return the items via the delegate. So let's see if this works. Crossing our fingers. And it doesn't look like it worked at all. <laughs> We're going to see what's going on here. Let's go back to the parser. Ah, it looks like we forgot to actually call the function. So self parks, uh, parse XML file name. Let's run it and see if this works. Yep, there we go. You can see the IDs and the titles printed out here.